as we look at our next clip, which is um, the uh, scene from Roger, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, um, we have the sort of legendary Bob Hoskins, who's so talented at acting, but still has to play in a buddy comedy with an animated rabbit. Yeah, you know, that I think that was interesting, is that when, um, when they decided to make it, Bob and... Uh, in the, um, the studio, they said, well, who, who can we get as the down and out private eye? And um, so they, uh, they went to Paul Newman and he said, a buddy film with an animated rabbit? I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> so he passed, as did uh, various others, I think Jack Nicholson and you know, he, and uh, so they said, well, none of the big uh, actors see the vision. Um, and we were in London because we shot the whole thing in London. Um, and uh, somebody said, you know, Bob Hoskins has been nominated for, I think it was the Long Good Friday or something, for an Academy Award. So he's an up and coming guy, but he's actually really interesting. And we said, oh, great. So he came in one night late after shooting on something. And we did a test <coughs> where um, he had to see the rabbit. He's the only one who who did. We we had tested other guys, Kurt Russell and, and various others, and and um, they they didn't see the rabbit. They were talking to empty space, or they were talking to a tennis ball. What is this, you know? And uh, Hoskins came in and said, "All right, now where's this rabbit?" <laughs> and uh, so we shot a little test, and it was amazing. You know, we. We sat on the set, and even though Roger wasn't there, we believed he was talking to this thing. So uh, Hoskins became immediately, you know, one of those great finds um, because he was he was a fresh face, more or less. He did the accent pretty well, you know. I mean, he's a serious Cockney, but uh, you know. And there were five of us uh, Americans, Yanks, uh, over there. We had to help him with his accent every now and then. Um, he chose a New York accent because <laughs> obviously that's the funniest. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, so um, you know it was it was a great um, great thing, and 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 he was very surprising. You know, there's a, there's a shot where um, Benny the Cab is coming out of Toontown Tunnel, and he crashes and throws. Um, Eddie out of the uh, you know the cab and onto the ground and uh, we had a stunt guy dressed up and he ran and hit the thing in this little sort of go-kart thing underneath um, and he came out and it, it, he flopped and then he tried another one and he rolled and, and Bob said you know it would be funny is if you do a somersault and land on your back let me show you. <laughs> and we said, well, oh no, Bob, please don't. He, he said, no, let me show you. He gets in the thing, zoop, flips over and lands on his back. We break up laughing. And we said, what the? And he said, I used to be a circus acrobat. <laughs> <coughs> so, you know, you never know. Yeah. Some of these actors actually have talents. <laughs> oh, I'm, was there are none out here, are there? <laughs> This is a little scene that uh, embodies kind of all of the uh, I got no keys aspects. Huh? Um, yeah. um, Hoskins acting with no one. Uh, he's manipulating the handcuff himself. Uh, so he has to imagine Roger's wrist and, and, uh, and then he does all his own stunts. So now, once again, it's about interacting with the real world. So in the drawer, knock over that picture. Didn't have to do that, but we insisted. Light and shadow. Um, Bob is manipulating the handcuff.
So now um, I put light on the floor so that the uh, animators would um, and the effects guys could find excuses to uh, to have uh, interaction, shadows on the floor. Now, now we could use CG guns and be even more interactive. Well, look at the trash back there. Look at Eddie just left trash on the floor Hello over there. Boys. It figures in the plot in, in just a minute. The same with the chair. Okay, Instead of just hopping up on the counter, I said, well, let's have him drag a chair. What's Anytime you can have more well, interaction, <laughs> then, um, you know, you... Uh, Tricky stuff with the, the water. Search the place, boys. <laughs> so we had puppeteers manipulating the guns Look, on wires we got and a on uh, the rods and, and was coat hangers and all kinds of stuff. And we used puppeteers because they were used to giving life you to inanimate like objects that. as opposed to the prop guy or mouth the effects oh. guy. Oh, look, he ran into the trash. <laughs> Now the window shades. Oh. Stop that laughing. You know what happens when you can't stop laughing. <laughs> One of these days you're going to die laughing. As for you, Valiant, step out of line and we'll hang you and your laundry out to dry. Very tricky thing to make that water move. Come on, boys. Let them spray. A water spout that Gee, came up out of the water and sprayed and then moved back life. down. How can I ever repay you? <laughs> For starters, don't ever kiss me again. <laughs> so. Thank you. It's truly, it's, you're talking so much about how objects, real objects in the space needed to have moved uh, opportunities for lighting to shift like the shadows of the mm -hmm. weasels. But at, at the same time, it's on Bob Hoskins to also touch the sort of cartoonish side of things. That it's uh, as if the reality had to interact with the cartoons, but that that the actor himself had to be able to bounce in a way that Bugs Bunny could bounce, but Bob Hoskins can't bounce. Yeah, you know, I, I think that was part of the fun of it. And the conceit is that, um, <coughs> first of all, we're, we were going with this idea that the tunes existed, and they existed in Hollywood, uh, even though it was London. And um, so how did you make the rest of the world seem to fit that? know and it was it was part of the uh, the the production design was was very good um, the set construction was was and one of the reasons we went to London uh, because Spielberg had done various things and he told Bob uh, oh you know you should shoot in London um, the art departments do things a little differently and Hollywood as done by a London um, art department set construction crew um, would look a little different. It might look more like a window in the past, but have kind of that cartoony uh, feeling about it. Very interesting. And um, and built into that also is that idea that we have uh, uh, the animation style is so classic, and then you know the the beauty of how it's shot is also feels very classic. So even though you're combining these two aesthetics. They both sort of feel so uh, uh, crafted in how they're put together that it's as if the two best versions of the world of live action film and the world of animation combined. Not, no one piece of that puzzle had to compromise to make the effect happen. Mm. Yeah, actually we were very fortunate in having, again, a, um, a technique that had been used since animation began, compositing and live action and, and animation and um, you know Disney's 
very first thing back in the silence was uh, Alice in Cartoon Land, and it was a live action girl in a cartoon world. So, as we know, um, you know, it's been done for, for forever. You know, there's classic moments of, um, you know, Gene Kelly dancing with, um, you know, Jerry the Mouse. Well, maybe it's, anyway. Um, and, um, you know, so when, when we went in to talk about this film at Disney, since they were co-production, um, we said, uh, so, what we're thinking is, they said, wait, 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 we'll tell you what you're thinking. <laughs> um, here's the deal. You know, do big wide shots, allow the animation and animators plenty of room to move the characters around in the frame. We said, oh, okay. And um, we said, well, what about uh, interacting with, no, 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 no. <laughs> that, you can't have the characters actually touching or interacting with the real world. That's very, really, really difficult. No. I said, well, okay, so they move out of shadow into light. No, 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 no. <laughs> they can't move out of shadow into light or light into, or pass through shadow, no. Um, you know, that's a, believe me, we've been doing this since Pete's Dragon and we know how to do this. <laughs> and I remember as a kid even saying, wait, the dragon was pasted on to the, <laughs> the movie. So um, we, uh, we left that meeting, Bob and I, and uh, we looked at each other and said, okay, those are the rules we're going to break. <laughs> and we set out on that journey. And we, the rule was always, if Roger really existed in the scene, how would we shoot him? Would we pan him? Would we tilt? Would you know? We would set up things where there was a chair in Roger's way, and he had to move it away in order to get through. <coughs> and uh, I remember hearing back when some of the Disney animators who were originally going to do it, um, or some of them were, they uh, they would say, "Well." Wait a second, why did that chair move? Well, that's because Roger pushed it away. Well, suppose I don't want Roger to push it away. <laughs> so there were, um, I don't know, a quarter of them who quit because they didn't like having their creative whatever um, confronted. <coughs> so, uh, and yet the others all said, wow, what a great uh, challenge. Yeah. So uh, as a result, uh, we ended up with a film that took classic pencil drawn, it was one of the last pencil drawn on paper um, with cells inked and, and painted cells <coughs> um, and compositing with an optical printer. Um, you know, there was no computer use at all. Um, and, um, you know, the optical printer, you know, you've got two heads and a and uh, mat, hold back mats and all there. Sometimes there were, uh, for one scene or shot, there'd be like 20 layers, they told me, of mats and backgrounds and composites and things and the, the live action, the live action mat and, you know. And uh, so um, it was a very, very labor intensive process, which um, everybody just embraced because they, they realized they were doing something that hadn't been done before. And it doesn't sound like it was in your practice to do things easy. It was about finding the best way to do it. Yeah, you know, I think that was, uh, again, going along with the idea of if Roger really existed, how would we shoot him? Um, we always said, what's the best way to do this? You know, I remember Zemeckis was famous for quoting. He'd say, okay, w what should we do here? And I'd say, well, we could do this and that and then Roger and he would do that. And Bob would think a minute and say, well, anybody could do that. <laughs> How are we going to do it? And I'd say, oh, great, the challenge. So then I'd say, okay, well, how about if we, and then this and that, and he said, okay, that sounds better. So we were always, you know, challenged to do something new, different, and better. 